Gene Kim and Stephen J. Spear, wiring the winning organization, unleashing our collective greatness through simplification, slowification, and amplification. Have you ever been tasked with a work project so engaging and challenging that it stands out as a highlight in your career? The kind that pushes you to your limits, demanding problem-solving skills for challenges far more significant than any individual task. These types of projects are rewarding precisely because their demands require you to stretch beyond your usual capabilities, but sadly, they're a rare jewel against the daily grind in the office. For most people, the reality of everyday work is filled with frustrations caused by a lack of clear information, prompt approvals, and sufficient time. Not to sound dramatic, but with the bare minimum mistakenly defined as a goal, today's average work environment demands heroics for trivial achievements, and it places workers in unnecessary peril due to unresolved issues instead of rewarding them for fruitful efforts and contributions. It's no wonder employees have become so jaded, cynical, and disengaged. But what if you, as a leader, could transform this norm? What if you could create environments where work flowed smoothly and success was the standard? In this blink to wiring the winning organization, you'll see how this possibility can translate into reality. Through three no-nonsense organizational rewiring steps, you'll be able to turn any dreary, ordinary workplace into a thriving haven. Curious? Let's dive in. From complexity to clarity. To rewire your company for success, you first have to understand why people create and join organizations to begin with. Organizations are born from the ambition to achieve what seems impossible for a single individual. From running a bakery on the ground to monumentally landing on the moon, these undertakings require a collective effort, a fusion of skills and expertise that no one person can muster on their own. But then why? Despite having similar goals and resources, do some organizations soar while others falter? This paradox is particularly puzzling in environments where the playing field appears level. Traditional business theories like Michael Porter's Five Forces suggest that competitive edges come from skewing this field, perhaps by monopolizing customers or suppliers. However, some organizations excel in even the most cutthroat sectors, achieving more with seemingly less effort. These organizations are, in essence, wired to win. The real question is, how did they get that way? The key to this enigma lies in understanding the dynamics of coupling and coherence in work environments. For instance, consider air traffic control. On a regular day, pilots and controllers interact with a form of loose coupling. Their communication is efficient, coded, and somewhat impersonal. This arrangement works perfectly for routine operations. However, in a crisis, this setting changes dramatically. Suddenly, the interaction is no longer just about exchanging information. It's about collaborating intensively to resolve an emergency. This shift from loose to tight coupling is critical in moving from everyday operations to handling high-stakes situations. This analogy is a powerful lens through which we can view organizational dynamics. Often, teams operate in what might be called the danger zone, a realm of high complexity and constant change where traditional problem-solving methods falter. In contrast, the winning zone is where things slow down and become more manageable, and where, as a result, innovation can thrive. This zone is where leaders can genuinely make a difference. To reach organizational success, you first need to rewire your organization's social circuitry to shift from the danger zone to the winning zone. Here's where slowification, simplification, and amplification come into play. Three strategies you can leverage to create an environment where your teams are able to move beyond survival and turn aspirations into tangible achievements. We'll unpack each strategy in the following sections. First up, Slowification. Embrace slowification for agile success. So, what is slowification anyway? Well, it embodies the paradoxical idea that slowing down processes can speed up progress. 
It's about thoughtful deliberation, like the old wisdom of pausing to sharpen the axe before cutting the tree. You know that scene in The Matrix, where time seems to slow down, giving Keanu Reeves superhuman awareness and agility, and letting him dodge all the bullets? That's a prime example of slowification. It involves decelerating your environment or choosing slower conditions to enhance your skills and understanding. When the environment can't be slowed, you can trigger your mind to switch from quick, habitual responses to more thoughtful and creative ones. Slowification in action involves detailed planning and identifying potential flaws before committing resources to a project. It's not just rehearsing the plan, but refining and improving it through feedback. This approach lays the foundation for stability, resilience, and continuous improvement. Still, the concept of slowification often meets resistance, especially against the pressure of maintaining operational tempo. The urgency to keep moving can overshadow the need for reflective pauses, but time and time again, going slow has proven to yield better results over time. Just consider how Toyota pauses between shifts for problem-solving, or how sports teams take timeouts to refine their strategies. Meanwhile, in software development, prioritizing problem-solving is essential to prevent technical debt from building up. At its core, slowification is about capturing and reusing knowledge. Feedback during planning, practice, and performance identifies discrepancies between intentions and outcomes, guiding adaptations in people's thinking and actions. Effective slowification ensures that every step is based on informed decisions. A great demonstration of slowification was seen in Netflix's response to an Amazon Web Services, or AWS, outage in 2011. When a large AWS cloud region failed, affecting services on half a million servers, Netflix remained operational. This remarkable resilience wasn't accidental. It resulted from strategic planning that had begun three years earlier. Their system, designed to be cloud-native, was structured to survive significant failures, including losing an AWS availability zone. To achieve this, Netflix implemented a loose coupling system with components that were able to gracefully degrade. They even developed a unique tool, Chaos Monkey, to continuously simulate AWS failures, forcing their engineering teams to adapt to constant levels of failure and ensure automatic recovery. In short, slowification is more than a technique. It's a mindset shift that enables organizations to tackle complexity with agility and innovation. Next, let's look at simplification. Spotlight the right issues with simplification. In transforming how organizations tackle challenges, simplification emerges as a crucial strategy. Unlike slowification, which alters problem-solving conditions, simplification directly addresses the nature of the problems, making them inherently easier to solve. It's like taking a large, tangled knot and methodically untangling it into smaller, manageable strands. Simplification can be achieved through three techniques, incrementalization, modularization, and linearization. Each one of these methods was illustrated by NASA's DART mission, a groundbreaking project aimed at testing asteroid deflection techniques for planetary defense in 2021. Think of incrementalization as adding small pieces to a puzzle, one at a time, instead of trying to fit everything together in one go. It's about separating what's new and untested from what's already known and proven, Focusing on smaller increments allows changes to be tested and refined more quickly and safely. In the DART mission, NASA applied incrementalization brilliantly. They separated the novel aspects of the mission, like deflecting an asteroid, from the established science of space rendezvous. This way, the team could concentrate their innovative efforts on the new elements, adding to the mission's complexity in manageable chunks. Then there's modularization which requires you to break down a massive, complex problem into smaller, independent units. Imagine turning a big, unwieldy machine into a series of smaller, interconnected parts. 
In the context of an organization, this separation allows teams to work independently on different modules, reducing complexity and coordination costs. NASA utilized modularization by assigning specific aspects of the mission to different teams. The launch system, developed by SpaceX, and the collision technology, developed by another team, were distinct yet interrelated modules. This approach allowed each team to focus on their respective areas, progressing simultaneously without needing constant coordination. As a result, the overall mission development was sped up. Now onto linearization. This third stage is about the call to action, ordering and further simplifying processes to prevent resource overlap and confusion. It's akin to organizing a busy kitchen, so each chef has a specific task, which reduces chaos and increases efficiency. When it came to the DART mission, while the specifics of linearization in planning and technical design weren't as visible, the principles were undoubtedly at play. By organizing the mission's workflow into distinct, sequential steps, NASA ensured that each part of the mission, from design to launch, was completed in an orderly, efficient manner. This organization minimized resource conflicts and streamlined decision-making processes. So then, what's the true measure of a successfully applied simplification process? Well, it's when you're moving closer to solutions, but are also able to innovate along the way. With this in mind, let's tackle amplification, the final phase in the wiring journey. Use amplification to efficiently tie up loose ends. Amplification is the final puzzle piece in our journey to wiring organizations for success. Think of it as the loudspeaker of the organization. But this loudspeaker doesn't just announce the correct problems to solve, it also rallies the troops to settle them as quickly and efficiently as possible. The concept of amplification takes a page from control and information theory. Imagine you're controlling a windmill, just like physicist James Maxwell did in the 19th century. You'd need a system that's quick to react to changes, whether it's a sudden gust of wind or a change in demand. The same goes for modern organizations. You've got to have a feedback loop that's so fast and sharp, it almost sees problems coming before they happen. So, how do you turn up the volume on amplification? It's all about ensuring those problem signals are as clear as a bell. And just like an aircraft's control systems have to be way faster than the turbulence they're dealing with, your organization's response to problems must be super quick and on point. Now consider Toyota's plant in San Antonio, Texas. That place is a masterclass in amplification. They churn out trucks and SUVs, each different from the last, and the operation runs like clockwork. Why? Because they've got amplification down to an art. Let's say there's a hiccup with a seat supplier. In a place where a new vehicle rolls off the line every minute, that could be a major headache. But Toyota has such a tight system of signals and responses that they can handle it before it becomes a big problem. It's like a symphony orchestra where every musician is in tune. So if one string snaps, there's already someone there to cover it. In conclusion, amplification isn't just a tool. It's the lifeblood of a responsive, agile organization. It keeps you ahead of the game, turning potential problems into opportunities for growth. More than anything, it's a mindset that ensures your organization is thriving well beyond the bare minimum. Talk about ending on a high note. <laughs>